Welcome to RPI's Cloud Suite Tech Talk series. My name is Keith Whalen, and I'm here to introduce today's webinar, Adventures in Cloud Suite, where we'll be talking to some of our consultants about the lessons learned and various experiences they've had for projects in implementing and migrating customers to Cloud Suite. Hosting today will be the indefatigable Melissa Olson, as well as myself. If you enjoyed today's presentation, please be aware that we host them every Friday at noon Eastern, and our schedule is available on the Work Out Loud events page. Also, Melissa and I will be happy to take any questions you have. Simply type them into the chat box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll address them towards the end of this presentation. And with that, I give you Melissa and myself. Hello, Miss Olson. Hey, Keith. How's it going? It's going well. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Well, I'm very excited to do today's presentation, Adventures in Cloud Suite. We've been doing this series now for several weeks. It's one of the Bill Getty boondoggles we are also fond of. And we wanted to do something a little more fun and a little different. So we gathered some of our consultants together, and we asked them to share some of the war stories they've had and their experiences implementing Cloud Suite. So do we want to meet them? Hi, my name is Jeremy Stoltzfus, and I'm a senior technical consultant with RPI. Hi, I'm Teresa Nelson. I am the project management office manager at RPI Consultants. Hi, my name is Sherry Nettles, and I'm a senior financials consultant with RPI. I've been working in the loss and enforce space for the last 26 years. Hi, my name is Diana Terrio. I am an RPI supply chain consultant. I am stationed in New Orleans, Louisiana. Hello, I am Matthew Slazak. I'm a senior HCM consultant here at RPI. Hi, my name is Amy Newman. I'm a senior project manager with RPI. And we've got a twist this time. We're going to base uh, you know, our story today on adventures and babysitting. It was an 80s movie. Some might think a cult classic. And um, you know, if you haven't seen it or... Uh, Remember. <laughs> Remember it. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're, we're going to walk you through some of the biggest plot points as we go through today's story. <laughs> have I ever done any babysitting? Um, yes, I have. Um, and despite me feeling unqualified for it, um, it, it seemed to work out. Um, I had a kid run out into the woods on me um, and land on a nail and share that one. Yep, I started babysitting when I was 11. I was a hustler in my neighborhood. Um, I was probably the only responsible kid in my neighborhood, so I had the market cornered on babysitting. I did all the pet sitting, babysitting, and we had a number of doctors in our neighborhood. So whenever there was a local hospital event, I would corral everyone's children in one household and cash in huge because I'd watch everyone's kids in the, in the same place. And of course, all the parents would pay me, so it was very lucrative. Run out to find that he had put a rope up in a tree and decided to swing out and landed on this rusty nail that went all the way up through his shoe and into his foot. And so here I am with little kids strapped to high chairs inside and I'm trying to get this kid who, I'm, I'm a small person, he's almost as big as me, back in and get his foot, you know, figure out what's going on and is he bleeding and does he have tetanus? And um, it was pretty scary and overwhelming. <laughs> I haven't done much babysitting. I used to bring arts and crafts for the kids to do. I was like your dream babysitter. I brought food from my own house to cook for kids that didn't maybe necessarily have food they like to eat in their own house. I've done a lot of babysitting. I've done a lot of hand-holding. I was a good babysitter. Bad things didn't happen. I, I not only hustled my own neighborhood, but my entire church. So everyone at my church, I babysat all their kids, too. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of had the, the word was out that I was a goody, goody, you know, straight as an arrow kid that did a good job with children. So, um, yeah, I, I went to college with quite a nice chunk of change in my savings account. And when I went to college, this and granted, I went to college in 1986. And when I left, my dad asked me how much was in my little bank account. And um, I had about thirty six hundred dollars from babysitting for two fifty an hour. So um, I did a lot of babysitting. <laughs> that was good. Well, they seem excited. <laughs> awesome. Let's go ahead and get started then. 
Okay, so the beginning of the movie, you know, this girl gets stood up or her date gets canceled. So she decides, you know, she's going to just make some extra cash, babysit the kids, uh, family that she's usually babysitting for. And she's expecting, you know, it's going to be a quiet night. What, you know, what can go wrong? You've got a couple of kids, put a movie in, order some pizza. You know, when I think of a cloud suite implementation, I wonder what the biggest misconceptions people have going into those migrations are. Um, one thing I think some people have um, a, a misconception with consulting anyway is that traveling is glamorous. Um, and with this particular project, we were traveling between two states at midnight and waking up at 6 a.m. each morning to kind of get up and go again. So not super glamorous, but uh, we got the job done. From an existing in for customer perspective, one of the greatest misconceptions is you won't use the old screen names. Um, we um, we still use um, referencing IC11 for Auto Master and IC12, but eventually you will become acclimated to um, to the layout of Cloud Suite and and truly truly those references of the legacy in four screens will will deter and go away. I think the biggest misconception people have about going into a Cloud Suite project is that it is just a 100% lift and shift. You're picking up all of your data from the S3 system. You're just gonna bring it over to Cloud Suite and there's not gonna be any kind of changes, any kind of, any kind of uh, transformation of that data. You can do that, but you really do lose some of your benefits from it. But there's also some really distinct differences where you can't do something like just pick up a status code field and slam it into GHR. It just simply doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So you do have to take some time and do some analysis on things like that. So it's not just a pure uh, bring it over and not even think about it anymore. I think the biggest mis misconception about Cloud Suite implementations is that uh, some clients, some users think that this is really just an upgrade to their existing Lawson system. One of the biggest misconceptions around Cloud Suite implementations is that they are just like any other upgrade that you've done on a previous um, Lawson. And the truth is that the difference between what is in your S3 environment and what you're moving to in Cloud Suite is so huge that it's impossible to just take what was there and move it to um, move it to the new platform. And so what we find often, our, our clients will go into the process and very early in planning be just overwhelmed by the amount of redevelopment work that they have to do and the amount of business decisions that their team is going to have to make as part of this implementation. So one of the biggest pieces of advice that I give clients early on is to not think of this as an upgrade, but as a total system transformation. It's going to impact everything that you do. It's going to impact every interface, every process you have. It is, it is truly like starting over, but what you come out with the other side is so much better than what you came from. <laughs> you know, it's amazing that after 150 webinars that we've done, people still think it's an upgrade. And, or we like to call it a lift and shift, and it's not. It's, uh, you know, you'll hear some of the stories that happen when maybe somebody does think it's a lift and shift and doesn't do, uh, you know, a, a true uh, transformation or, you know, just think about some of the things that have to happen moving from an on-prem to a cloud suite world. Okay, so then, you know, she's at home with the kids and her friend frantically calls her and needs a ride from the bus station. So let's check in with the team and see, uh, you know, what kind when of they've been frantic calls, <laughs> frantic they've calls they received. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell the time about the um, my first job out of college when uh, I got a call on a Saturday morning because the printer wasn't working and turns out it was out of paper? My one CFO friend called me daily on his way to work and his, on his way home from work. We got called in to help a client who had found themselves in a pickle with a Cloud Suite implementation. Even asking for help because they didn't understand something. They might have, they were live in, in their production environment and just not sure and accidentally did something and, and just panicking and freaking out. So um, I've certainly taken calls like that to try to help troubleshoot and look into 
um, and just to calm their fears, so to speak, that they didn't do something detrimental. And was sitting in my garage talking to him till one in the morning to alleviate his fears about the go live. And she really needs my assistance. So cashed out of my slot machine. I went um, in the lobby and we had a FaceTime call. I was able to walk her through all of her issues via FaceTime. So, you know, it's really our jobs are 24 seven. They had been at this implementation now for about a year, but felt very lost with system functionality. They questioned the design decisions that they were making. Um, and we were able to go in and first of all, give them the training that they needed so that their team felt like they were empowered to make good design decisions that were right for their business processes and ultimately led them to a successful go live. Okay, so they get in the car and they start heading to the bus station and flat tire. Boom. Yeah. I'm thinking the equivalent of a flat tire in a cloud suite migration is a system CU surprise. See Customer if our team agrees. Updates. They <laughs> always get you. Let's see if our team agrees. Define a funny CU update. I don't know. We did have a CU um, only two weeks before go live that severely broke our RSO yoga connection to the application. There's certainly been CUs that have released surprises for us, something um, as simple as some formatting updates, uh, the way uh, text looked one day and then the following Monday after an update, it looked completely different. Um, certainly with the UI changes, uh, the new Web 4.0 UI, there's been a lot of changes and um, over 4.0 web controls are really um, like the key driver behind them is so that they could be more mobile friendly and responsive controls. Um, and yeah, it's changed. People are resistant to change and, you know, the menus moved from the top to the left hand side, for example. And so you log in and you suddenly don't know where your menus are anymore. And um, it's just a change. So these CEUs are rolling out and, you know, it's, it's a double edged sword because you're on the bleeding edge. You're getting the latest and greatest code all the time. And you have a chance to really kind of shape where the product's direction. If you see where they can improve something, it's very quick. Infor has been very quick to respond to many of those things. And so that's great. And we can get that new code in and it can help you out. They entered many incidents uh, to enforce support and within a couple of months, sometimes depending on the severity of the issue or the complexity of the fix, um, the, the CUs have those, those updates in them. We can fix one thing, maybe something that isn't broken, but we just have to adapt to that new code stack and make sure we're still getting all the information and all the functionality that we were using before. Maybe what we were using before was actually a bug, which had been fixed. I had a client recently that we were working with to implement talent acquisition, and we had gotten through our first two phases of testing. And as we moved into the third phase of testing, we received some information from Infor that they were about to move in functionality that this particular client desperately wanted around talent acquisition. The offer letter functionality with uh, configurable paragraphs. It was really a great idea for us to be able to say, here is an offer letter and we just want to be able to select from a list of paragraphs and just be able to plug those in very quickly. Um, but we had to wait for that CEO to come through. There was a little rework and we needed to spend time retesting some processes that were already tested. Um, but the surprise ended up being a good thing because in the end, they got more functionality than they had originally bargained for. It is something where we know where the roadmap is going and we know the functionality that we want to get to. But sometimes we just have to be a little bit patient for that CU to show up. The lesson learned from my unexpected event would definitely be that in a traditional project, you wouldn't have been able to incorporate this item right off the bat, but because of the nature of what we're doing in Cloud Suite, we didn't have to say, wait, this needs to be a phase two. We were able to say, okay, let's pause, let's figure it out, and let's incorporate it into the project. So you see, you know, it pays to be flexible. 
you know, not be so rigid when it comes to a multi-tenant or a cloud suite uh, system. You will be getting these monthly, and uh, the more you want your system to stay the same, the more it's going to change. So if you've got that, that flexibility, you know, you'll go in uh, with a little bit more success in the outcome. Well, from that flat tire, everything begins to unravel. They get picked up by a tow truck driver, Hanson John, who uh, gets a call on the way to the car repair shop from his boss because his wife's cheating on him. And so he tracks down his wife, and he pulls out a gun, and he starts shooting. Uh, <laughs> can you relate? I mean, yeah, I think any of, any of us and any of you guys who've been a part of a software implementation, you know, there's this small little issue and, you know, somehow this little issue snowballs, snowballs into, yeah, something, into a, a big, <laughs> a big challenge. We'll call it a big cluster. A big cluster um, like let's go that. ahead and see the team if they got any experiences to share. I had traveled from my home right outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota down to a uh, client that was in the south and this was in november and we got there and there was a freak ice storm and so here i am having left snowy cold minnesota to travel to the south and i'm i'm running a design workshop out of my hotel room because my client in the south hadn't been able to open their offices that day because of bad winter weather. And it just goes to show you never know what's going to happen, but you have to be willing to roll with whatever comes your way and continue to keep the work pressing forward and get creative sometimes, even if it means being on a conference call miles and miles from home in a hotel room. Four to five hours into our go live, the systems go down. The client actually thinks. It is an issue with our implementation, but after further research, we discovered it was a scheduled downtime for Infor. So we were on site, day one, go live. Monday, we're there early, the whole team, and we start working, and within an hour of being there, I get a notification from Infor that um, the N4 system is down. Unscheduled downtime. Like not working at all. Um, it was it was one of the only times that I've I've ever experienced that um, for that length of time because it was down most of the day and it had to be on day one of Go Live. So a little tricky to get users in the application on day one and day two of an implementation when the entire system's down. So um, we got creative and thought of ways that we could continue training the users, looking over guides, still trying to be productive while we were on site, even though we couldn't be in the application. It was quite interesting maneuvering through that process, explaining to the customer that this is not normal um, because they wanted to know why you know, they couldn't use the system. And so, um, yeah, that was, that was the most, um, startling and a little bit complex, but we migrated our way through it and everybody was good and happy. To okay, so next they are avoiding the gunfire, so they run into a Cadillac and hide in, uh, in this car and it gets carjacked. So now they're taking on a ride that they were just trying to get away. And, they, uh, they didn't sign up for it. They definitely didn't sign up for that. <laughs> I wonder if our team has been taking on any unexpected rides. In particular, I find dealing with um, outside vendor interfaces can be a real challenge. Every vendor has their own list of expectations for what they need testing to be, what they expect testing to look like. And sometimes they don't have the same priority of getting the project done as the project team does. And so keeping those third party vendors engaged pressing forward so that we can have a successful conclusion to our implementation and um, and not having a testing cycle with a third party vendor hold up our progress is is one of the big challenges that I feel I encounter often. We had a shipment from a client site that that was coming from a third party for a check printing. The equipment that arrived was not correct 
and it was a tardy order to begin with. So we were behind on, on getting it. And then we finally got it. We were so excited to get it, open the box and it wasn't the right equipment. So everyone frantically, um, you know, got on the phone and we called the, um, the supplier. A mere two weeks before a go live, our check printers were shipped to the entire wrong state. And we had to scramble to get printers shipped to the correct destination for go live. So we had to then um, work with the other hospital in the other state to get it shipped to the right hospital in the right state. And at the end of the day, everybody got their equipment and, and the world was lovely. In this COVID world, we are now doing a lot of remote training, which is working very well. However, when you are not sitting next to your trainee, it's kind of hard over go-to meetings or team meetings to actually get your point across to them. So I had one lady that I was training and she was phenomenal, but her computer skills were zero. And when I'm telling you her computer skills were zero, they were zero. So I'm training her. And as we're going over the steps that she has to take, I tell her to hit the tab key. And she's like, do I? I said, the tab key. And she's like, what's the tab key? And I can see her mouse going all over the computer screen. And I'm like, wait, the tab key is on your keyboard. She's like, Okay, let me find it. So she's looking, and I'm trying to explain to her, it should be on the left side of your keyboard. Look, it's right above your caps lock. And she's like, what's a caps lock key? So this went on and on, but we really just, you know, I, 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 my heart went out to her. I felt so bad for her. She had no idea. Finally, we found the tab key. We found the space bar. So um, training actually went well after that. So this car ends up at the chop shop in order to get away from these guys. Chop shop, they're running through the building and they exit into a blues club and the people there will not let them get out of the blues club until they sing the blues. Gotta sing the blues. <laughs> Let's see if our team members have ever had to sing the blues. They found a room for all, all the RPI consultants to sit in and then have access still to the functional people in the, in the organization. Um, this room was a, sort of a, a big abandoned open area, and there were a, a, a lot of windows on one side of the wall with no window coverings. So we're sitting at a long conference table, and the glare coming in from the windows made it very difficult for us to see our computers. Our workspace that they put us in in one of our locations um, was very, very hot. We were in a conference room with windows to outside with no window coverings or blinds. There was a break room just right down the hall. And they used some of the area, like corners and stuff for storage. So I walked down the hall and I saw a box of Christmas decorations. And in the Christmas decoration box were um, plastic tablecloths, like, you know, disposable plastic tablecloths. So we got the disposable plastic tablecloths who happened to be red. We grabbed some plastic Christmas tablecloths and hung them over the windows and taped them up there with duct tape. And um, the windows showed from other areas of the hospital. Made the room look like um, you were sitting in hell. It was a, a warm, fiery glow um, all, all day. And, um, and it served its purpose because we could see our screens. Yeah, every time we came into the room, the whole room was kind of glowing red and we felt like we were entering through the gates of hell. And the CEO noticed we had Christmas tablecloths as a makeshift window covering. I don't think that the CEO of the hospital enjoyed or appreciated the aesthetics from the outside of the room as much as we enjoy just being able to work from our computers and, and see our screens. Um, they politely ask us if we could um, remove our red tablecloths and they could replace those with some window coverings for us. So, so we, we did take our tablecloths down. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Okay, so they are now still being chased by these guys from the 
chop shop and they jump on a train to escape and what happens there there's like this gang fight they're you know all fighting over their turf and now the kids and the babysitter are in the middle of this i wonder if our team has ever ended up uh, somewhere they weren't supposed to be <laughs> um with cloud suite no i don't think i've been involved with any gang fights Unfortunately, sometimes we do get caught in the middle, um, whether it be between uh, two different vendors who disagree about a, an interface going back and forth or formatting on some of these things, or um, not even an interface, but it could be as something as simple as, you know, maybe our Active Directory doesn't want to speak to Info or vice versa, or how they've got something configured. Um, and we sometimes get stuck in that point where we have to look the client in the eye and say, we're on your side here, but we have to let other people kind of duke this out. Um, we can't necessarily fix this kind of problem ourselves. So we kind of have to stand back and let those other issues get resolved. Yeah, so super challenging. Uh, we came on site to go live um, in two different locations and had uh, no working computers for the users. We had no Wi-Fi and no network. So the users had no access to their previous network files. We had no Wi-Fi. So we ended up giving the users our RPI laptops and tethering them to our mobile hotspots so they could actually get in the system and start working. So that was pretty challenging. And then um, once we did get Wi-Fi up and running or once they had it running, um, it had a 30 minute disconnect so every 30 minutes all day long, we got kicked out of Wi-Fi and had to get all the way out and log back in again. So all of a sudden we would get dropped off the network and everybody would just like throw their hands up and, and have to log back in. So that made for a long week. With the talent acquisition module recently went under um, a significant overhaul uh, with functionality and being in the middle of an implementation project during that uh, had a lot of challenges because new features were constantly being released every month during the life cycle of the project. Everything comes to a climax when the little girl falls out the window of a skyscraper with the, the bad guys are chasing them and the family's downstairs and they have to, they have to go out on a ledge to rescue her. Oh my. <laughs> so, you know, I think we've all had to go out on a limb and either for our clients, for the project, for our teammates. So let's talk to the team and, and see, uh, hear about some of the times they've gone out on the limb. With Cloud Suite, I, I mean, I feel like we're constantly going out on limbs because it is an ever evolving and ever changing environment. Um, we do have to constantly think on our toes and try things new um, that we've never done before to be successful and to learn how the system works and learn how to adapt to the changing technology and application. Really, I would say AP automation uh, was probably the biggest risk. I remember saying on an initial phone call with uh, senior leadership that it would, I quote unquote, it would physically pain me to implement in for cloud suite and not put you know, some kind of data and invoice capture on the front end of that because it's such awesome technology. I took a risk to save the day. This was one I didn't have, I don't feel like I have a whole lot for. One of the biggest um, rewards and most satisfying um, aspects for me was to push my comfort zone within contract management and strategic sourcing. I had worked extensively in the old Lawson V10 with PO25, and here comes this entire new module within contract management and strate strategic sourcing. So when um, at a client, when they were implementing contract management and strategic sourcing, it was really rewarding for me to go in and, and push the boundaries within this new module that I was just learning. I really embraced it. I did a ton of research on the back end in order to help my clients implement that piece to the best of my ability. And it really turned out perfect for them. It worked exactly the way they wanted to work. Um, everything within the strategic sourcing piece, which is totally new to the contract management piece that can play a little bit like PO25, but it is much more dynamic. I don't take risks. Sometimes you got to take a risk. You got to go out on that limb and trust yourself and trust your team and, and 
you'll get some great results. I don't feel like I'm a henny penny. Yeah, Teresa and I definitely work well together. Uh, we're, we're yin and yang. Um, she's very risk averse and I'm always going to sit there and say, let's try it. Let's find out what we can do. Push the envelope a little bit further. The only time I really get worried is when I don't have enough things to worry about. Um, we may realize that that functionality isn't really what we wanted uh, or the ideal that we were aiming for with that is not truly what the experience is at the end of it. Um, that concept of, you know, we, we designed the sidewalk to go right like this, but people always cut across the middle. Um, that user experience versus how it's designed is something that can uh, show up. So we do sometimes have to kind of walk back on that and uh, figure out how to make some of that functionality work. And oh, I'm, I definitely do things a certain way. And what, what does that mean? It means that my way is the best way. So like every good 80s movie, it all ends happy, it ends in triumph, uh, you know, the girl gets the boy, the, the girl gets the kids home safely before the parents come back from their event where they were hanging, dangling right in front, outside the window. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, we want to hear about, you know, some of these triumphs at the end of these Cloud Suite implementations, because we do want them all to end in a good, happy 80s story style. Let's, let's ask our team. One of the best feelings that I've had during Cloud Suite implementation is running through a successful, successful conversion, um, being able to run through a, an entire conversion with minimal to no errors. The biggest triumph is uh, that we pulled off a successful go live, the clients on the application and really enjoying it, using it and loving it. And um, I'm really proud of our team for pulling that off. When you see something during these projects like the first payroll running um, and you see people being able to go from um, a candidate applying through talent acquisition all the way through to somebody being hired in the system and actually seeing that hire show up and get interfaced and they actually get a paycheck that's very satisfying and i recently did a cloud suite implementation that when we stepped into the project felt like we had maybe gone crazy and signed up for more than could possibly be done in one project and and that particular go live spanned um, over a week and it involved a huge a pretty large team on site together for days on end um, and very complicated conversion processes and systems set up and and coming to the end of that with the, the team that we got to work with on both sides, RPI and the client, I have to say was one of the, um, the greatest successes of my career was seeing that through to completion and, and getting to the other side and watching it be such a huge success. Go lives are very fun. Um, you know, there are very tense moments, but there are very light moments. You know, things happen and everybody starts laughing at one time. You know, there's donuts all over. Every go live, I don't know what it is about donuts, but there's donuts all over for every go live. I mean, it's you're running around for several days, right, with your hair on fire, working late at night, um, and you're tired. Everybody's tired, but you're such a, a team and family that you're not going to let anybody in the process fail, right? So if you see, you look around and you see an area, a functional area or a person, um, whether it's one of your own teammates or someone on, on the client site that's having challenges and you need to help them. It wouldn't be a go live if you didn't have a few meltdowns. But at the end of the day, they're really exciting. I love them. It's, it's just, it's, it's high intensity. It's high pressure. But it's also, you know, you feel a bond, not only with your teammates, but with your client. It's one of those great um, kind of refreshing, feel-good moments for not only us, but for the client as well, to be able to see that all come to fruition at the end. How do I feel about Cloud Suite? I absolutely love Cloud Suite. 
I am a buyer at heart. I spent most of my career as a buyer in the healthcare sector. Cloud Suite has truly bumped up the game. It has truly enhanced what I thought was a great system to begin with. I loved V10 when we went to it. I knew V10 in and out. So Cloud Suite comes along and it's like, it can't be better. It's better. It's much better. Don't think I figured it all out, that's for sure. Um, but what I have figured out and seen and how it's working and what we just implemented for our client is tremendous. I think it's great software. Um, and I think everyone should make the move. I think it's really, really um, a game changer. And there you have it, Adventures in Cloud Suite. Well, the, those were some excellent stories we heard were. today. That was really fun. I, I appreciate mm -hmm. all our all our team members for being good sports. And you know, I think it reflects the fact that they're they're passionate about these projects. They love mm -hmm. doing these projects. And yes, there's they're challenging, but they feel like they're you know accomplishing something and helping their customers. And it's really rewarding for us too. So mm -hmm. maybe see if there's some questions. You want to do a thank you wrap? Just thank you, everybody, for. Yeah. So uh, thank you all for sitting in with us and hearing um, some of the stories. You know, we kind of said at the top how it pays to be flexible, pays to be nimble uh, in Cloud Suite implementations, and you can see today that you know things will come up. We're in the middle of a pandemic right now, and, and that affected a lot of projects in a way that none of us could have foreseen. So um, you know, if you can just take that from today's presentation, you know, you'll be on your way. So thank you. Well, while we wait and see if there's any questions, I'll go ahead and, and ask one of ourselves, which is, uh, you know, how long did it take us to put together these clips? And actually, <laughs> uh, it was Mr. Uh, Mr. Richard Stout that did all that editing. And yeah, I, I'd say it took, him, it took him a few hours to put them all together and obviously do the interviews and get those recordings and so forth. It was fun doing all of that, mm -hmm. sitting in on the interviews yeah. and... Hearing it's these stories the first time around. We heard a lot of other stories that didn't make the cut. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, um, everyone else found it entertaining. Uh, certainly, uh, it's exciting for us to try something a little different. So we want to thank everybody that did attend. And if you have any questions that come from this, you can always send us a follow-up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you, guys.